Okay, thank you. Um, it's <clears throat> very difficult to follow on from a Japanese perspective. I was hoping that Narika is going to say everything more than two centimeter ESD. That's it. End of the story. Uh, but she's come out with a very balanced view on that. Uh, so I've tried to readjust my talk, but uh, we'll see. There'll be a little bit of repetition, but please put up with me. Uh, when I started thinking about this talk, I did a literature search at least about five or six times and still couldn't find a Western literature on colonic ESD till I had to actually speak to people. And then finally, Alexander, where is he? He's somewhere here. Uh, he said, well, you missed my paper. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the only paper. So Western perspective is going to come from one paper that's available in the literature and rest I'm going to tell you a little story uh, <laughs> to see what, you tell me what you think about it. Uh, so that's uh, experience from Italy. Alexandra followed more or less the same path as me and went to um, National Cancer Center and uh, started doing ESD a while ago. And they published their experience on 29 cases with polyps more than three centimeter. They found the end block resection rate uh, which is one of the main criteria you do it, uh, was 55%. Uh, but I think the main reason which matters for the patient is the cure rate. So although the end block resection rate was 55%, they still achieved a cure rate in 75%. And complications given the ESD uh, with them doing in a, this small series is not too bad for two out of 29 perforations. Sorry, I didn't write the complication means perforation there. So two perforations out of 29, but they didn't require surgery. They were both closed by clipping. And one bleeding, uh, which was again treated endoscopically. So it's a happy ending. No mortality, no emergency surgery, and most patients were cured. So that's the only bit of literature which is out there. Uh, now what I'm going to tell you is a Western perspective of an endoscopist who went to Japan to learn and find out about ESD and what he feels about it. So that's the uh, Western endoscopist who went there, 2003, 2004. He found out that uh, the best man, the godfather uh, of ESD, uh, was, is in National Cancer Center. That's where ESD was e evolved. So he went there and started getting lessons from Dr. Gatoda uh, about ESD. And uh, if you go to National Cancer Center, Dr. Gatoda or anyone, all they tell you is IT knife. That is the only knife. It is the best knife in the world. I do everything with IT knife. And the Western endoscopy says, brilliant. That's it, sort it then. I'll concentrate, learn everything, go home and start doing it. And then he decided to move around a bit and met another expert called Dr. Oyama. And he says, forget about IT knife. Look at this, hook knife, brilliant. I can rotate it left right, down, up, whichever way you want to go. It does everything. The stomach, esophagus, duodenum, wherever you want to do, this knife does for you. Well, he thinks, well, maybe there is a choice here. Uh, I'll practice both the knives. Then he bumps into uh, <laughs> Dr. Yamamoto uh, in a beautiful uh, teaching university hospital and says, forget about all those knives. Needle knife. That's how knives were evolved. The first knife came out with needle knife, and that is still the best knife. This is before Dr. Yamamoto started using other knives. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that, and this guy, I saw him doing uh, in stomach, esophagus, duodenum, <coughs> colon, anywhere, needle knife. Even in Japan, I tell you, most people are scared of using needle knife. I'm definitely scared of using needle knife. Uh, so he said, there you go. I showed lots of cases, and I was pretty impressed that it works. Uh, moving on, it gets more and more complicated. Where all these knives are pouring through? Uh, Tokyo University's got their own knife. There you go, flex knife. Then Dr. Yagi phoned me recently and sent down some knives, actually, very kind of him, before actually Kim had provided some. I've developed a new knife, better than my original flex knife. This is the best knife. <coughs> Great. Uh, it keeps, keeps getting complicated. Then you see another dangerous knife, which I thought I ordered, got it few, opened it, took it out of the packet, and then got a bit scared of it and put it back in. 
But on that, the triangular tip knife, I'd say it's not just Olympus Arena about ESD and knives. There are a few other companies who have started doing it as well. Fujinon have got their own knife, uh, a flush knife, which is actually a needle knife, but the beauty of this knife is you can inject through it. Uh, so it does have advantage, but again, it's a needle knife. There is no protection on it. Uh, Pentex has also got their knife, and uh, again, this is the, not a bad knife, but it's a very difficult knife to use, a mucosectome. Uh, this is a bipolar knife. God, there's no end of knife. <laughs> now, this is the Western perspective of ESD. At the end of four months, I was completely confused. God, which is the best knife? What do I do now? Uh, so the, it's not easy. Uh, but what happens in Japan is, uh, when I phoned Noriko a few months ago to say, look, can you do some demonstration? And he said, which knife have you got? I only use this knife. That's exactly the same in Japan. You speak to any expert, he'll say, thank you very much. I'm an IT knife man. I'm not going to use any other knife. I'm going to use flex knife, and I'm going to use flex knife. So uh, I thought that was bit strict, and why do they do that? Maybe it's just because they are very hierarchical, very patriotic to their universities, to their bosses, and probably there's an element of that there, is that because you're trained in this system with this boss, and it's a bad thing to even talk about IT knife if you were trained with this knife. Uh, so I tried to persuade those guys to say, look, there is a place for combining these knives. Maybe we can identify this lesion for this knife, this lesion for that knife, and he said, not in Japan. Go home and do it there. But it's not happening in Japan. 